Good morning. We want to welcome you here this morning to a wonderful day. Can you say amen? Oh, come on. It's going to be a wonderful day. It's going to be a little hot, but we're in air conditioning. Would you stand with us as we begin in worship? Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up. Never runs out on me, oh, your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me, your love. Higher than the mountains that I face, stronger than the power of the grave, constant in fails it never gives up well this morning you're welcome to worship how you feel you want to worship whether you want to stand whether you want to sit whether you want to walk the aisles whether you want to come forward just be free this morning just let just let the spirit of the lord just work through this place and breathe the holy spirit through our hearts amen Oh, 
as we lift up our eyes, we lift up our hands just to worship you, Father. Your love is devoted like a ring of solid gold like a vow that is tested like a covenant of old, your love is enduring through the winter rain beyond the horizon with mercy for today faithful you have been and faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. makes us whole you shoulder our weakness and your strength becomes our own you're making me like you clothing me in white bringing beauty for ashes for you will have your bride free of all her guilt and rid of all her shame known by her true name and it's why I 
sing your praise will never be on my lips never be on my lips your praise will never be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips you will be praised you will be praised with angels and saints we sing worthy are you lord you will be praised you will be praised with angels and saints we sing worthy are you lord and that's why i sing your praise will never be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my This next song I just like for the first verse and maybe the first chorus. You're always welcome to sing. I don't want to take that away from you, but just maybe listen. Just listen to these words about where my confidence has been brought from. When my world is shaken, you are my firm foundation. You are my rock of ages. Jesus, you are. When my world is shaking, you are my firm foundation. Yes, you are. You are my rock of ages. Jesus, you are. In every circle. No matter where I am, I take you at your word. You take me by the hand and lead me through the dark into the promised land. Jesus, you are my confidence. strength 
Jesus, you are my confidence. Jesus, you are my confidence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, our confidence. He that would leave the 100 for the one that would go out and search for that one lost soul and leave the 99. What an awesome love. Amen. your foe, still your love far from me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. Yes, you did. You have been so, so about the man that has a hundred sheep but one wanders off that he would take the time he would leave the 99 and go get that one what kind of love is that unexplainable unfathomable he finds a sheep he takes it home wherever that sheep is he's more concerned not that he's not concerned about those that love him but it also talks about the righteous that he wants the lost to come to Jesus. Ultimate sacrifice of his love and explanation of his love and expression of his love is that he died for us. Wow. How do you explain that? 
reckless, calculated, reckless and not a way that is just uncontrollable because our God is not uncontrollable, but he has a reckless passion for you and I. He loves you so much that he sent his son to die for us. Isn't that awesome? We should say, wow, wow, thank you, Jesus. There's no shadow. No shadow, you are light of man's more So true. There's no walls. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you There's won't no lie of the down. enemy that he will not tear down. To me. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, come after me. Thank you, Lord. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, come after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, come after me. shadow of doubt. There's no mountain that he can't come and get you. There's no wall of deceit, of hardship and bitterness that he can't break. There's no lie of the enemy that he does not tear down and bring truth. Caleb, would you take that? Oh, no shadow. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. time to be worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Would you just take that glory? Would you take that inspiration? And I, and I pray there was an anointing that came into your heart this morning. Would you take that and greet that as pastor comes? Amen. Greet one another before you're seated.
Well, good morning again. If you're our guest, we want to welcome you and really appreciate you coming and spending some time with us this morning. This is a, a great morning. We have, I think, about 30 or 35 elementary kids off at camp, and uh, that's exciting, isn't it? I mean, good things happen at camp. And then uh, next week, I think, it, Colin, when is it? The next week or two, we have our junior high and high school. They're headed to camp. We have about 35 or 40 kids going to camp there. So I'm just going to ask you if you'll continue to pray for those kids at camp because good things happen. I know those were my experiences growing up, and uh, we want those to be the experiences of our kids as well. This is where God really has that ability and time to get a hold of those kids. And so be, um, uh, be praying for them, would you? This would be great. Well, I don't know how your week went. It's hot. I mean, I mean, it's hot. And it always seems my timing is almost impeccable if you look at it this way. Uh, our AC went out on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. And the la- remember the last cold snap we had in October or November when it was really, really cold? Our furnace went out. So our heat went out when it was cold, and our AC goes out when it's hot. So there we are. So I'm just sleeping downstairs right now, just trying to stay cool. Annette's away with our interns in, in, at a Microsoft convention, and, and they're raising money for our internship, so that's exciting. So um, it's me on the couch with MLB channel and ginger snap cookies. I think that's about where it is for me right now. So, but uh, it, yeah, it really is. It's so good to have you today, and we're just glad that uh, we get to spend a little time together. What we're going to do right now, and we say this, we like to continue our worship through, through our giving, and we want to thank you for your generosity. If you're our guest here today, uh, please don't feel obligated to give. This is something we want to do for those that call Canby their, their home, Canby Four Square Church their home. Um, but we've been able to see so many good things happen through your generosity and how God has blessed not only this community, but how God has blessed so many other communities like uh, uh, around the world, really, around the world. And be thinking about this as we move forward into September. Canby Cares is coming, which you sponsor uh, there's a huge outreach, uh, medical services, food services, all kinds of things that happen right here on the campus. And so that's coming up, and I think you're going to hear a little more about it. But I just want to thank you and encourage you. Uh, God is doing good work through your generosity, through your worship, through your giving. And so I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward, and uh, I'm going to pray. Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day that we have, and we just pray that you would continue to uh, touch our hearts and that you would transform us. Lord, let us be known as you were generous to us, uh, we would be generous to others, that we would be generous with our time, that we would be generous with our resources, Uh, because if it weren't for your great generosity in our lives, none of us could say we would be here today. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the great gift you have been to us. Let us be a gift to others And we say this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, we have a few announcements.
Now that's a big surprise, wasn't it? I mean, even the setup, I, you know, I'm thinking, wow, they're going to they're gonna shave his hair. I was actually getting ready to look up here and make sure everything was cleaned off after they did it too because that's a whole mess of hair that coming at you right there. Well, that's great. Thank you. 800 bucks to uh, help scholarship kids to go to camp. And we really appreciate uh, making disciples who make disciples for Jesus. So that's great. Well, we have some great guests here. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, when I've talked guests about Monica and Alpha, I don't feel they're uh, guests. They may be guests at our church campus, but they're not guests in our lives. And I really do appreciate the partnership, uh, the friendship that we've been able to have with Alpha and Monica over the years. Um, Alpha was saved at Portland Four Square Church. Uh, when he was 10 years old, and that's my, my alma mater as well, so we got that. And then Sunnyside Foursquare Church, Alpha and Monica planted a church in southeast Portland about 10 years ago called Revolution Church, and it's just an amazing place. And we're so excited because this month when we talk about the heart of being with, uh, we couldn't think uh, of a better couple to invite to be with us than Alpha and Monica. Now, the greatest thing you have on your resume is not church planting. It's not everything you do in the community evangelizing and helping people and working with Luis Palau and doing that. It's that you're raising three girls. That, to me, gets some cred. That gets some street cred right there, all right? I know, yeah. So pray for Alpha. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Uh, but would you do this? Would you just welcome uh, Alpha and Monica? Would you do that right now? Alpha, come on up. Oh, we got the, just, you introduced the video. Okay. All right.
Come on, can you give God a big praise for what he's doing there? Would you stand with me one more time? I want to pray. Thank you for having us. My name's Alpha Hayward. My wife, Monica, is here. We're pastors of Revolution Church, and we're just, we're just an extension of your family too, right? Let's pray and ask God to do something inside of our hearts and in our minds today, okay? God, we thank you that we can come together in this house. We thank you for the AC that is blowing right now that I don't even have to use my sweat towel, so I just give you praise right now just on my own. God, I just thank you so much that your Holy Spirit is moving in this church. And Lord, your word says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. And so, Lord, we open up our hearts, our minds, and our eyes, our spirit to receive the truth from you today. Change us with it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you as you're seated. Thanks for coming to church today. How many of you came to church today because the church is cooler than your house right now? No? Okay, Pastor Ron, thank you for being so honest. I love how honest your pastor is. And you know what, Pastor? Because, because you are such an honest man and you're not afraid to share your realness, that's a huge reason why God is doing such a movement inside your church and in this community. So I just want to thank you for that. (laughs) Preaching the gospel is awesome. Preaching the gospel is great. We're, We're told that we're supposed to preach the gospel, right? How are people going to hear, right? How are they going to come to faith unless somebody preaches, amen? But on top of preaching the gospel... We also need people who are going to be the gospel. And I want to talk to you about that uh, this morning. Monica and I are going to just share with you a little bit about what it means to be the gospel. And what I'm talking about is I'm talking about not just being somebody who talks about it and just talks about being a Christian or talks about the good things that being a Christian is, but somebody who is actually a living example of the gospel. Because the gospel should do something inside of you and me that takes over, I mean, does more than persuades, it takes over and begins even changing our, our thought process and our motivations in life as to why we do what we do when we start placing the gospel of Jesus Christ at the forefront of our life. See, what, what we do sometimes is we put the gospel of Jesus Christ somewhere in our life And it's a dramatic difference when the gospel of Jesus Christ is at the forefront of your life. Because now it affects your decisions. It affects your decisions for your future. It affects how you spend your money. It affects how you spend your time. Because now you're more concerned about the gospel. You can say the kingdom of God. You can say lost souls. You could say discipleship. You're more concerned about that. And so now when you're making your decisions about retirement and vacation and what you want to buy and where you want to go and how you want to do this and do that, now it starts affecting everything. You're not getting excited with me today? (laughs) I was an evangelist first before I ever became a pastor. So anything that I say to you that freaks you out, your pastor will fix it next week, okay? (laughs) But in Acts chapter 9, you see this example of the apostle Paul, but his name originally was Saul. And, and if, if you and I remember, those of you who have been in church for some time, you know that Saul was the guy who was persecuting the church. He thought that what he was doing was actually godly. He was on a mission to wipe out the Christian church. He was angry. He was full of envy, but he also believed he was on a righteous mission. And he was a pretty smart guy. You know, he was, he was pretty religious. He knew the Bible. He, you know, he, he knew everything that there was to know. He was zealous. He was a religious leader. He had the qualifications to do this, that, and the other. He was a dual citizen. I mean, Paul was the man. But Saul eventually... He had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And if you know the story, you know that he, he got knocked down. He got struck blind. 
You know, all after Jesus said, hey, why are you messing with me? That's the alpha version of, you know, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Or if you're in the King James, why persecutest thou me? So eventually Paul gets converted. I mean, he kind of had to. <laughs> Jesus comes and meets you like that. I don't care who you are or what you're doing. You're going to change. <laughs> and, and for some of you, you know what I'm talking about because that's exactly what he had to do to get you saved. And Wave at me if that's your story. For those of you who have learned the hard way, wave at me. Okay, good. Look at you. Some of y'all look so cleaned up, so prim and proper. And if somebody just knew your story, if they just knew about you a little bit, you getting embarrassed thinking about it right now. You're like, do not call me out right now. You stand up and tell us your testimony. You know, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Romans chapter five, verse one says, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord has done for us. Do you agree that the reason why we can be changed and the reason why we can be saved is because of what Christ has done for us? Come on, it's because of what he has done for us. I want to say it one more time because I want it to sink in. We, we can be saved, renewed, be different, be changed because of what Christ has done for us. So you would agree with me that it's not about anything that you do for him. Come on, if it had anything to do with what you could do for him then what would be the point in Jesus coming and dying for your sins and mine? So it is only because of what he has done for us. And see, that just wrecked Paul. That wrecked him. And you know what? It still wrecks the church today. It still wrecks us today because we sang about it. The reckless love of God. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. Come on, that is the gospel in a nutshell right there. Is there anybody in the room today who is not saved? Would you lift up your hand? Anybody not saved in here? So everybody in here is saved. I want you to think about what Jesus Christ has done in your life and is still, come on, he's still doing in your life. Do you agree with that? That that when you came to faith in Jesus Christ, right, it was it was a heartfelt, honest prayer. At least I hope it was, right? And I hope someone told you the truth that it does not get easier. It's not unicorns and rainbows, it's not skittles raining down on you when you get saved. But that Jesus is with you. And that he is committed to being with you the whole relationship and working on you and changing you and making you into the man or woman of God that he's called you to be all the way until he takes you home to heaven where we're all going for eternity, amen? Amen. That that God, God is committed to that. And guess what? What we're talking to you about today is that it doesn't stop there. Is that God is doing something inside of you Because he wants to use you to do something inside of somebody else. And that's being the gospel. And guess what? That's what he did with Saul. And I love it because Jesus changed his name from Paul to Saul. He gave him a new identity. Remember what the scripture says, right? Old things are passed away. All things become new. Come on, that's who you used to be. But with Jesus, this is now who you are. And it took a while for it to catch up because remember he had a reputation. There was things about his life that followed him. So people saw him a certain way. But then they only had to see over time that he was different. And that he was about something different. And, and I, don't, I don't presume for a moment that, that Saul was one of those easy ones. You guys know what I'm talking about? You know how you have some people get saved in church. You're like, oh man, this is a blessing. This is awesome. And you get some that get saved. You're like, Lord. I don't know what crown you got waiting for me. But this one right here. Can they go to someone else's discipleship class? My wife, Monica, she's 
actively involved in discipleship, in serving, and in, in helping change the lives of people. And I want her to come up. I want her to share um, a couple stories with you of things that she's involved in right now, where she's, where she's being the gospel, where she's at. Could you welcome her, please? Good morning. Good morning. Where are you going? <laughs> He's leaving me. Okay. I've been so emotional. Sorry, just a little side note. I, t I walked in this morning and I told Joy, I just like, I don't know, I just overwhelm with emotion today. And, and I think part of it is just that I was, I was telling Pastor Ron that this place is so warm, so welcoming, and, and you, your church, you and, and the people that serve here and love this body have done, done such a great job of making it a place just to come into his presence I feel like really easy and so just a blessing to be here today um, just have a little bit to share with you I am going to share um, just two testimonies my, my personal self regarding being with being with people being the gospel lived out and I know many of you have amazing testimonies and stories yourself so I feel very blessed and honored that I get to share a couple today with you but first I feel like as I was praying and preparing that the Lord says Remind the people that we are commissioned. We are commissioned. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus, this is, this is as Jesus getting ready to descend. He said, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given them and be sure of this I am with you always even to the end of the earth I think two main points out of that is go and make disciples of all the nations that means everybody everybody deserves to hear the gospel the good news and number two point that I feel is so important that we don't do this on our own strength he says I am with you I am with you always to the very end of age. So this being with people, discipling them, going places is not something that you do on your own strength. So when the Lord calls you to do something, you can't have an excuse that says, but God, I can't do that because that's not valid with the Lord because his Holy Spirit enables us to do whatever he's called us to do. Two things is that first, you need to be discipled yourself. It's very important. Paul, was, or Saul, who turned into Paul, was a very good example of that to all of us, is that he did get saved, he did encounter Jesus, and he got discipled right away. He, he, he just engrossed his entire life. Everything about him was immersed in Jesus and having to renew his mind. Secondly... What's really important is we, we, become disi um, we become discipled. And secondly, it's really important that we don't live, understand that we don't live for ourselves anymore. This life is so temporary. So temporary. Alf and I lost um, our brother-in-law this year, our age, to brain cancer, eight months. He had eight months diagnosis, sorry. It just brings you into reality. I know many of you lost loved ones and stuff, maybe some facing some things yourself, but... Our life is temporary. We are called into something greater than ourselves. One of the cures for depression, and I know that there's probably many sitting in this room. I've battled depression myself, but there's many sitting in this room that battle depression. One of the cures for depression is doing stuff for other people. So the gospel is true. It works. God has his answers in his word. Um, I'm going to share two testimonies. Number one is uh, I started going to prison ministry um, at uh, Coffee Creek for women uh, about three and a half years ago. And I was praying and asking the Lord, Lord, what, what would you have me do, you know, outside the church? I really needed something outside the church family because I live and breathe, you know, church, we're pastors. But I want something outside. I want it where people don't know me. They don't, you know just a different environment, and the Lord put on my heart to link up with this lady and do a prison ministry. And um, it has been one of the best things in my life. Um, it's helped keep me, um, it's helped me press past fears. When you're walking in the yard and you have 300 eyeballs on you and you're by yourself, no guards are with you, 
they've entrusted you with your nice badge now, you know, and you got to, I got to walk from one side to the other side of the yard to get to the classroom. And, um, you know, you have to push past those fears that come up that the enemy tries to stop you from fulfilling the things that he's called you to do. Because I knew I was called by the Lord. I answered that call. Now I have to press past the fear. And um, it's just been an amazing time with those ladies. Um, you know, not all the ladies that come into that ministry have any, have any relationship with Jesus. Some do. Some have grown up in homes. But it's, it's an amazing time of just sharing the gospel with them, loving on them, showing up. I think, like I said in that video years ago, is that, you know, a lot of times I think, like, we as Christians who have been walking with the Lord for a while, we just kind of have this, we just get into our little ruts, and we expect, okay, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, and then people are going to get saved, and, you know, right now I want it done now. But the truth is, is that showing up over and over again and continuing to sow into people's lives just love, being there, those women have told me over and over again, thank you for coming because I have nobody that comes and visits me. So just to have that consistency in their lives. And that is being the gospel. You're being Jesus. Jesus doesn't leave us. He doesn't forsake us. And so that is, an, that is a great example. And I know, like I said, many of you are doing other things. Continue to be faithful. And when you want to quit, unless you hear clearly from the Lord and you have peace, also know the enemy is trying really hard to get you to quit too. So just because you feel, because there's been several times I felt like, ah, I don't know if I want to go, you know, because of just different things going on. But you got to push through that. And you cannot quit unless the Lord told you to quit. If he called you, then he's the one that's going to have to call you back out and stay faithful. Number two, the, the, last, the last example I have is um, that was my kind of like outside the church walls. I think it's really important, too, that we don't forget about the people inside the church. And there has to be, a, just like anything, we have to have a good balance in life, you know, because we, we work hard at reaching out, too, and outreaches and stuff. But it, it's very important that we disciple those that come into the church, and we don't quit on them either. So my testimony is, um, it's, kind of, it's kind of a funny story, but when Alf and I start, planted Revolution, um, we had uh, this lady come, and she's a... Uh, She's from Russia. She came with her two kids, single mom. And I thought this lady hated me. And I thought she hated Alpha's preaching. Because she literally came for six months, didn't say a word to me, would leave Alpha's messages before they would end every week. And I thought, oh, good, she's not coming back next week. I thought it for sure. She's not coming back. She can't stand this. But then I was kind of perplexed, like, why does she keep coming then? And... Um, I built a relationship with her over time. She started to open up. What, what, what was going on with her is that she had a lot of walls, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, like stuff that I've never experienced in my life. She grew up in Russia by her father. Her mom abandoned her. And so this lady had walls from here to, to heaven, but walked with her through very difficult things. We did, me, Alpha, other people in the church. Stay faithful. This lady to this day, she, she was at the church with me yesterday because we got a new building. But she was at the church with me yesterday to clean toilets and dust. She has been faithful. God has done amazing things in her life. And it's been hard. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's been an easy relationship. It's been very stretching on me, you know. And the thing is, is God calls us to do things not just for other people. It's doing a work in us. It's doing such a deep work in us. The prison ministry does such a deep work in me. My relationship with this lady in the church has done such a deep thing in me. I probably would have never experienced if I haven't walked this out with her. And as I'm discipling her, God's speaking to me about things. And her strengths, some areas maybe I'm weak, become strengths for me. And so just the importance of being with and what God wants to do in you and through you. Come on. Preach, Moans. Preach. She got a lot of preach in her. Romans 1, 16 and 17 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power. Everybody say power. 
It is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Not ashamed of the gospel. Why not? Because I know the gospel. So I can speak about it with confidence because my understanding is growing. If you're taking notes, this is one of the things you should write down. Not ashamed of the gospel. Why not? Because I know the gospel. So I speak about it with confidence because my understanding is growing. Listen, if you don't know the gospel, don't be ashamed. Just let one of your leaders know. Say, hey, disciple me because I don't know the gospel. That's what you need to do. See, stepping into discipleship is on you. Making sure that you get discipled and equipped is on the church. But you, you've, got to, you've got to say, hey, that's me. I need that. And there are some pastors and leaders in this church that would be excited to disciple you. Because when you're discipled, because we, we, we all get more confident the more that we know. So we've got to put ourselves in a place of growing. Can I hear an amen from the church? Now, it is the power of God unto salvation. Why is that? Because as I grow in understanding of the gospel, there is a power that's released in my life that provides me salvation, the power of the resurrection of Christ. There's a power released in you. The Bible says the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of you. There is a power that becomes more and more released in your life the more revelation that you receive of the truth of the gospel. The more that you receive the truth of God's word into your life, there's a power released inside of you because faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. The more that you are putting the word in, inside your life, the more that you are uh, allowing discipleship to happen inside your life, you are allowing more and more power, the power of the Lord in you. The Holy Spirit would not come upon you with power, come on, Acts, right? And not allow you to grow in the word. The Holy Spirit's not going to come and fill you with deutimus, power, and then have you be ignorant and a baby on the word. The Holy Spirit's going to say, eat. Eat up. It's our flesh that wants to get a little lazy. Oh, y'all didn't want me to come and preach today? <laughs> Sometimes we get lazy. Can we be honest? Sometimes we don't feel like doing all that reading. We don't feel like going to this class that we know we should go to. We don't feel like signing up with joy to go serve. I want to go on vacation. If y'all want to be real, come on. Vacation? Missions trip? Cruise? All-inclusive resort, Zimbabwe. And you know, when, when the gospel is at the forefront of your life, even your cravings change. You just crave different stuff now. You just, you're like, yeah, I do want to go on a cruise, but man, I want to see, I want to see somebody get delivered from some demons in Africa. I'm going. I want, to see, I want to see some people get saved that nobody ever thought would get saved. I want, I want to go see that. I'll go on the cruise next time. There's something inside of you that begins to change. Justification is God's act of removing the guilt and the penalty of sin while at the same time declaring a sinner righteous through Christ's atoning sacrifice. When you are ashamed, you cannot be confident. You have more confidence as you receive more understanding of the gospel. The saving power of the gospel is that it is changing you so that you can be used to change others. Philippians 1.6 says, And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. The opposite of shame is confidence. The Bible says that you become more confident the more that you know his word. 2 Timothy 2.15. It says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needs not to be ashamed, who can rightly divide the word of truth. The gospel literally means it's too good to be true. 
Did you know that? The gospel, the literal translation means it's too good to be true. Can I give you three keys real quick? Three keys to write down. When am I supposed to be done preaching? Because I don't know exactly what time I need to be done. Just preach as long as I want to. They don't care. No one needs to eat. We'll just keep going. Okay. We're okay. I know we have a second service. They'll wait. God is patient. Right? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love will wait for the second service. Okay. Three keys. Number one, new identity. New identity. Paul has a name change. That means he has an identity change. Receive your new identity in Christ, okay? Number two is the past is over. This is very important. The past is over. Did you know yesterday's dead? It's gone. You can't bring it back. Did you know that? Even, uh, listen, I don't care what you did yesterday. Or 10 years ago or 20 or, uh, you know, all the things that were you back then. It's over. So let it be over. Amen? Be free from that. Paul said that he threw away his past wisdom and that he crucified the flesh. He committed to another way of life and he rejected everything of his old life. Listen, he rejected everything that he learned back then. He said, I considered it all rubbish. You know, Ron, tell me if you ever heard this before. Uh, But the way I was raised, oh, yeah, well, this is who you married. Well, this is just the way that I am, and if you can't accept me for who I am, then that's your problem. Jesus is changing us all the time. He's changing us all the time. Come on, because we got stuff. We got stuff that needs work. And he's working on us. And here's, here's what brings me so much joy, makes me so happy. It helps me so that I don't live in shame, is that Christ knows me, and he knows everything about me, even the ugly stuff, and he's committed to changing me. He's okay with it. But he says, Alpha, all you need to do is just submit to my work. Church, believer, all we got to do is just submit to his work in our life. So when things happen, and sometimes the Lord will speak through your spouse. Sometimes the Lord will speak through your neighbor, your co-worker, your boss, or your manager, even if they're not saved. He'll speak through your pastor, and guess, he'll, he'll say something that rubs you like sandpaper, and you're like, ah, hey, uh-uh, I think we need to find a new church. Listen, if you start talking like that, you just confirm that God's working on you. You can go run away to another church if you want to. And guess what? You're still going to take you with you, and God's going to keep dealing with you over there. Well, Alpha's starting to preach now. Uh, mm. Submission to his mission, number three. Submission to his mission. Paul committed to discipleship, and Paul submitted to his leaders and their teaching. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. You know what Paul's saying? He's saying, what would be the point in Jesus even coming? What would even be the point? Listen, we have a um, couple of discussion and prayer points for you. So um, they're going to come on the screen. It's like magic. Yes. So how do you see the gospel still changing you? And how are you sharing the gospel with others? And listen, if you're not, don't, don't feel all bad. Don't be, you know, I mean, just don't. But just be real. Hey, you know what? It's not really something that I'm doing. Okay. Guess what? That's something you can pray about, okay? Something you can ask someone to hold you accountable about. Ask God to give you a heart for the gospel, and ask God to give you a heart to share the gospel. Now, 
something I want to clarify real quick before we break off into that is sharing the gospel is different for everybody. Some people use a skateboard to share the gospel. Some people serve food to share the gospel. You see what I mean? Some people get up on a stage like this and preach to share the gospel. Some people share the gospel in the marketplace when they're working. They share the gospel with their coworkers. However God has called you or put in your heart to share the gospel, that's what you're responsible to do. You're not responsible to try to be like someone else. You're responsible to be who God's created you to be and ask God, how would you like me to share the gospel, Lord, in the way I'm living my life? So let's go ahead and do that. I think everyone's just breaking up into some groups, right, and talking and praying. So we're just going to give you all a few minutes to do that, okay? Whatever you want, you just make your own. Just right, Come on, just break them all up. You know, how about f- groups of five or six, okay? Come on. Come on now, don't, uh-uh. Don't act like. Hey, I just tried to come listen to a sermon and go home today. I wasn't trying to have all this interaction and all this talking to people I don't know. As a matter of fact, go find some people you don't know. You know? We're just going to give this a few minutes, okay? How's the gospel changing you? How are you sharing the gospel with others? Okay, for the next two minutes, just pray now. I want to ask the brother that was leading worship right here. I don't know his name. Cody? Can Cody come back up here and play and sing? Is that okay? 
I think Ron's okay with it. I, I asserted something that I might have to ask forgiveness later, but anyway. See, I caused a problem. See what I did? Okay. Yeah, just pray now. Just pray. Ask God to give you a heart for the gospel. Ask God to give you a heart to share the gospel. Come on. God doesn't need cheerleaders. He needs people to be doers of the word. Amen? So my answer to the question, how do you be the gospel? And I, we've heard examples and testimonies. We've talked about it. We know that it's in the word about being the gospel. But there's a verse of scripture that kind of makes it plain for me, kind of, kind of stamps it in my heart. And it's found in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. And this is what it says. It's where Jesus gives this command. He says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Now, this is the part. He says, give as freely as you have received. Did you know that you can't give something that you don't have? Did you know that? You can't give something you don't have. Jesus said, give as freely as you have received. God has gifted and anointed each and every one of us to do certain things well. Isn't that what the Bible says? Whatever that is that you have received, that is what God expects you to give. He expects you to give that of yourself to someone else and use that to share the gospel with them. Church is not a place to hide. Church is a place to be encouraged and equipped to go. Jesus did not preach comfortable Christianity to anybody. That's the Americanized gospel. The biblical gospel, because Jesus... He's all about church. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves with one another because we need each other. Amen. We need a good, healthy, loving, grace-filled, real church like this. But it's not for us to just come and do our church thing. We're supposed to take our church thing out there. We're supposed to be the church. Be the gospel. But before you can go and do, you have to learn how to be. You know, there's a lot of us that are out there excited and ready to go do stuff without letting Christ do the work inside of us that needs to be done. And that's why I say don't, you know, church is not a place to hide. See, I know, I know Brother Caleb a little bit. But Brother Caleb can't serve in hospitality and serve on the worship team and not let God deal with his heart. Because eventually, whatever's going on in there is going to come out. I can't do that. You can't do that either. We got to be real about what's going on. We got to learn how to be the gospel. So before you can do, you have to be. We have to receive the full work of Christ 
in order to be a walking billboard of the gospel. The power must be working in you so that it can come through you. The gospel is not just about salvation. It is also the power to share it with others. Can I give you a verse of scripture that I just want to prophesy over this church? It's in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9, and it says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. I believe that the things that God wants to do in this church, God wants to do in this community, God wants to do in your life and in your family, is that it's something that you've never even imagined. I believe it's great and I believe it's bigger. It's bigger than, it looks, listen, it's bigger than Candy Foursquare. God's going to do an awakening. And you can be a part of it and it can come through you. But the way that awakening looks is it's not going to be a dynamic, you know, one dynamic anointed fireball preacher standing on a rock. It's going to be the unity amongst the saints coming together and being the gospel and doing the hard things that nobody else wants to do. I want to encourage you to be creative and innovative in how you go and present the gospel to people. I want you to go do silly things that bring people to Jesus. Come on, I'm just speaking it how I'm feeling it. To be willing to go do silly things. You remember back in the old school where somebody would bake a pie and go over to somebody and say, welcome to the neighborhood and give them a pie? You know that that will revolutionize somebody's life right there. Do you understand that? You understand that giving somebody a hug, you could never underestimate the power of a hug. Man, I've... Listen, I've prayed for people that have come to the altar, dealing with demons, put my hand on them, pray for them, see all the ugliness go down, see all the tears and everything, and guess what? Nothing broke them like when somebody came over and gave them a big mama hug. That broke them. I was on a mission trip in Costa Rica. I seen hugs do more damage against the kingdom of hell than a word that I preached. People just come up and hug and just say, I I want you to know that God loves you no matter how messed up your life is, that God loves you. You know what? That just broke people. It broke the heavy yoke. Slavery was over at that moment. I want to encourage you to be the gospel because it's a commandment of God. I I want to go so far as to say it this way, and I don't want to be offensive. If we're not going to be about the gospel, that we're not being obedient. And a disobedient Christian or a disobedient church is not okay in the Lord's book. But if you want to see the spirit poured out, like I know some of you intercessors in here, you've been crying out, you've been asking God to do something, to do something amazing in this community, do something amazing in this church. I want to tell you something. He's already doing it. He's already doing it. It just looks different than you thought. Be a part of it. But if you want to see it go down, you want to see it happen, it doesn't have to always be an extravagant event. It doesn't have to be a day in the park. It can be something as simple as baking some cookies and giving somebody a Jesus hug. Amen? If you receive this word today, would you stand with me and and we'll pray and we'll close the service. Is there anybody who came to church today just with a broken heart? You came today with a broken heart. Anybody else? You say, man, just I'm, I'm hurting inside today. Appreciate your message, but there's something going on with me. I need God to heal me inside here. Is there anybody else? I saw two people. Is there anyone else? Is there anybody here today your heart's really burdened because maybe somebody you know, maybe a family member is not walking with the Lord and you're so burdened in your heart for them today? Can I see that? And how many of you need a healing? You need God to heal your body or you need him to heal your mind or your heart? When my wife said the word depression, 
How many of you, something just jolted inside of you because that's what you're dealing with? Let me see who you are. Okay. Okay, in the name of Jesus today. Come on, keep them up. In the name of Jesus today, freedom's coming. In the name of Jesus today, freedom's coming. In Jesus' name, about seven people, eight people, I saw raise their hand. In the name of Jesus. Church, I want you to pray with me. Okay, I don't want to pray for you. I want you to pray with me. Let's join our faith together right now. And let's say this right now. Say, in the name of Jesus, all manner of depression, I bind it and I cast it out in Jesus' name. Now pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, move. And if moving means me, then move me and bring healing in this house. Those of you that had your hands up about depression, I wanna make sure that a couple people put their hand on their shoulder, so would you lift your hand? And those of you who are around them, would you please put a hand on their shoulder? And just for about 30 seconds, I want you to pray for them right now, and I want you to speak over them, as you pray, speak over them, that today it will be their day of deliverance. Come on, use your faith and the power of the Holy Spirit that we believe in and that we sing about and talk about right now. Let's step in authority right now. And in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that the spirit of depression will not rule and reign in this church. It will not rule and reign with each person. But God, I thank you for your deliverance and your power. Thank you for doing that. Father, for everyone else that raised hands for other things, broken hearts, people who are burdened for the salvation of others. Lord, we lift them up to you by name right now. Those who are not walking with you, we lift them up to you right now, Lord. And we ask, Lord, God, we pray for their soul. God, we just ask that you would just come and interrupt their dreams, come and send people their way. God, that they would have encounter after encounter after encounter from somebody from heaven to bring them into relationship with you. God, we pray for the, God, we pray for those that we know that are wrestling with evil spirits. I thank you, Jesus, that you came and you demolished the works of darkness. And I thank you for that. And that a hug can annihilate everything that the enemy's been trying to hold in bondage for so many years. I just thank you for that. Come on, Jesus, do what you do. If you love the Lord and if you really believe he's doing it, I want you to just say thank you, Jesus, and give him a big shout of praise. Thank you so much, Pastors Alpha and Monica. What? Yes, let's give them a huge round of applause. Wasn't that an incredible encouragement to put yourself in that place of growing? Wow. Um, we want to give you a couple different ways to respond to this because that was a powerful word. How many of you heard something, uh, prayed something, felt something powerful today in your life? So we want to give you a couple different ways to respond. One, we're going to have prayer teams available on the side. If you need more prayer, if you need to talk to somebody, we will have those prayer teams available. Another, if you're in that place where you're ready to go, we have signups right outside by the donuts with ways to sign up and practically respond and love our community and do what they're talking about, about put yourself in that place of growing. Um, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us, church family. We love you. God bless you. You are dismissed. <laughs>